If I ask you for a completely legal file name, you probably have near infinite ideas in mind. Maybe you like lowercase letters, maybe you like uppercase letters, maybe if you want to emulate a space, you'll use a dash or an underscore, or if you're a Windows user, maybe you'll actually just use a space. But what if I said that both of these are completely legal file names, and they really shouldn't be? Now, many of you may instantly spot what the issue is here. We'll start with the dash log file. So let's go and do ls dash log. And you would think it would ls that specific file. No. And that's not just a problem with this specific application. Let's try to do it with something like cat, for example. It's going to say it's an invalid option. Because of the dash there, the file name is being interpreted as an option. And this isn't a problem with the way the applications are designed. This just makes sense because no applications expect a dash to be at the start of a name. So at this point, you might have a couple of ideas. Maybe we surround it with apostrophes. That should deal with the problem. No. Okay, let's try the exact same thing, but with quote marks. Also no. Okay. How about we go with a backslash, because backslash is usually used to escape a character. Also, no. Now, just for the sake of your sanity, never start a file name with a dash. If it's some sort of naming convention, get a better convention. Use an underscore or basically anything else. We'll get into some of the other special characters that are a problem in a bit, but... Anything that's not a dash is much easier to deal with, but it's totally fine to use a dash inside of the name. Let's say you want to have something like uh, holiday-2022. dash There is no issue here whatsoever. We can go and use this with all our applications and everything is good. It is only a problem when it is at the start. Now, when it is at the start, it's not impossible to deal with. The way we deal with it is using the file path. So let's say I want to go and cut out the file from before. We can go slash home slash Brody slash video and then grab this file right here. And it's all good. Or we can use the shorthand version of the path by going with the tilde here. Or we can go and use the relative path, the local path, whatever you want to call it. And that's fine as well. Now, assuming the application is designed sensibly and handles file paths correctly, this is going to work in basically every application. I can't say for the things that are a little bit buggy, but something that isn't available in everything but is still very useful is using dash dash instead. So if we go and include a dash dash here, it's going to work. What the dash dash basically says is anything after this point, it doesn't matter what the characters are, doesn't matter if we're using a dash and it looks like an option, anything after this point is treated as the input, in this case as a file name. However, that only applies to special characters in the application. If it's a special character in your shell, well, that's not going to help you. Now, before we go into that one, there's one really amusing thing about using a dash at the start of a file name. So let's go back to what we had before, and let's say I just want to go and tab complete it. I have tab completion available for my options, but I also have tab completion available for my files. And in ZSH, it makes no distinction between the two of them and will dump them both out at the exact same time. I can't see if something like fish or bash is going to do the exact same thing, but it definitely happens here. And uh, in some cases, it can mean you get a ton of things on the screen. Now, when it comes to other special characters in your file name, the general rule is a dash, as long as not at the start, and an underscore are safe. What about other things like, say, a semicolon? Okay. What about things like a dollar sign? Dollar sign's fine. I would avoid it just because variable names also use a dollar sign. So if you had a file that was named something like um, shell, for example, um, yeah, that's going to cause problems. And in this case, it tried to touch something in my root directory. Very bad, don't do that. Because as we see, that equals slash bin slash zsh. Just 
avoid dollar signs as well. Also, if you're specifically using ZSH, a single exclamation mark is going to work. But like with the dollar sign, if you have symbols after it, that is going to have special meaning. That is what we are doing with this file right here. I'll get into how to deal with this in just a moment. Then there's things like apostrophes and quote marks. If I have an empty quote mark here, it's going to take things onto the next line. If I have a name like this, it's going to make the file, but it's not going to have the quote marks in it. So if you have the quote marks in there from another method, like a GUI application, for example, now you've opened up a really weird can of worms. Like, for example, this file, which is also a totally valid name. Let's try ls and then a. The file doesn't exist. Do you know why the file doesn't exist? Because when we go and ls it, it's going to get rid of the quote marks and think we're just looking for A. Now, most shells do have a built-in way to deal with this. If we don't go and write it out, instead what we do is try to tap complete it, it is going to escape all of those characters, and now this is going to function. Now that's probably the most easy and convenient way to deal with it, but there is another method as well, assuming we're not using apostrophes. What we can do is use apostrophes. This looks really strange, but if we go and run it, it is going to ls out that specific file. The idea here is the apostrophes also act as a way to escape characters. So we're escaping these quote marks and now they're being treated like the regular file name so they no longer get treated like quote marks and now the file name works. The same can be done with the other file we had as well. Let's go and grab this one here and if we go and get rid of these backslashes, use the apostrophes here, that is also going to work. Now the quote marks do not operate in the same way. The quote marks are great for dealing with spaces and things like that, but as we can see, this is being highlighted and so is this. If we run it, it's going to try to interpret this right here, and because of the quote marks, the highlighting might not always line up correctly, but it is treating it like a special character. But then, what if we use a file name with apostrophes in it? Can we double apostrophe? Well, we can't. And this is the one location where the quote marks act a little bit differently. The quote marks, when there are apostrophes, will act like the apostrophes were acting before, and now it works correctly. What I'm saying here, though, doesn't matter, because you shouldn't be doing this in the first place. What you should do is name your files in a sensible way and not use the characters. Alphanumeric, so the alphabet and numbers, plus, because of lost and found, we can accept plus, dash, underscore, nothing else. If you're using something else, don't talk to me when things break. If you like spaces, fine. I don't like spaces, but you can use them. You shouldn't, but you can use them. Ultimately though, the best way to deal with ridiculous files like this is to not even deal with them from the shell like this. Because if we go and do this inside of a GUI file manager, this is how I made all the files. We can go and name things literally however we want, and it's all good with it. As long as it's a legal file name, it's not gonna complain. But one thing I don't know is why file names like this were ever allowed in ext4 in the first place. My assumption is they're allowed over on other operating systems, so they want to make sure those files don't become an issue when they're brought over, but I really don't think they should be here. Now credit where credit is due, this video is loosely based on a Q&A from DistroWatch working with file names which contain special characters. But this didn't go anywhere near as deeply, it mainly just focused on Dash. I wanted to explore how ridiculous you could get with this, and the answer is more than I think you really should be able to. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Have you ever had to deal with files with special characters in them? Did you know how to deal with them? Did you just put them into a GUI and do it like that? Or did you have a more CLI solution? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scarb, Stanley Ribeiro, pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody on Games. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.